Good morning. This morning I want to begin in Mark, the ninth chapter. And I want to begin reading at the 31st verse. And the Word of God says, And he taught his disciples and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered unto the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. But they understood not that saying, and were afraid to ask him. And he came to Capernaum, and being in the house, what was it that ye disputed amongst yourselves by the way? But they held their peace. For by the way they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve, and said unto them, If any man desire to be first, he shall be last of all the servants of all. And he took a child and set him in the midst of them. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said unto them, Whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name receiveth me. And whosoever shall receive me receiveth not me, but him that sent me. Here he's trying to tell them what's going to happen. And here they're bickering about who's the greatest. And he had to set them down. He says, you're not getting it. You're not understanding if you want to be the greatest, he didn't say you couldn't be the greatest. He said, if you want to be the greatest, if you desire, if this is really your desire to be great in the kingdom, be a servant. And the greatest of all is the servant of all servants. The least of the least is the greatest in the kingdom, which made no sense in the worldly. You know, everybody wants to be the best. You know, how many of us talk about our children? They could be the worst student in the world, but they get one good grade and we tell everybody in, we can see. Oh. My son got an A. My daughter, she's excelling. Nobody ever says, mine is mediocre. My son, my child is extremely average. It's just so wonderful. Straight C pluses. They are above average. Way to go. And you know what? As long as they've done their best, we don't know the difficulty of the class. You know what? When I was in college, you know, a B average was good. But you know what? A B average in intro to computers... And a B average in advanced trigonometry are two entirely different classes. Now, I value that B minus in trigonometry a whole lot more than I value that B minus in intro to computers. Because I had to work really hard. When you're in advanced calculus, a passing grade is a great thing. Because most people don't. You know, we want to be the best. You know, and there are some people that do get just straight A's and they don't even do anything. You know, it was... It, one time I remember, I'm a person that, if I'm in class and I hear the instructor, I receive verbally better than I do by reading. So here I was towards the end of class and I was probably at, close to the top of the class in grades and they asked me to read aloud in class. And I opened my textbook and it was like almost over the end of class and it cracked like the first time I'd opened it. It may have been the first time I opened it. And it was just funny. But you know, we all are different. We all learn differently, we talk differently, we act differently, we, 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 we take in knowledge differently, we express love differently. I was trying to explain to a young couple that, you know, her love language and his love language are completely different things. You know, I was trying to explain that when he doesn't take the day off and he feels miserable and he gathers himself up and he gets himself together and he goes to work regardless of the pain in his back or his hips or... That's his love language. He needs to show his love by providing for his family. And he cannot feel good about himself when he takes a day off. And it's going to be very difficult for him to ever relax because he feels like that's the way he shows his love to his family is by going to work. And she thinks that staying home and being with the family is more important, but that's the way she shows her love. You know, we, we do things differently. And the only one that really knows... What motivates us truly is God. And right now we've got two people bickering, two of his followers bickering about who's going to be the greatest. And he's trying to tell them, you're misunderstanding. You're misunderstanding. If you really want to be great, be a servant. If you really want to excel, come as a little child. And he's desiring to, for us to understand. He has turned everything completely upside down. Because in the world, you know, if you want to be great, you have to be Stronger than everybody else. You have to be more important than everyone else. Richer than everyone else. You know. Oh, that makes you great. Does it? Where are these people with great wealth? You know. 
200 years later. What, did, what, what made them so great? You know, I went to the home of George Washington. Yeah, it's a big place, pretty nice. But it, it's not something I would aspire to live in today. That's not a great comfort. I mean, the kitchen's outside. The, the, I mean, it was a lot of work to live there. It's a pretty house. And I'm sure at the time, it was like a great, great place to live. But when you see the way a lot of them lived, cold and miserable, dirt floors, that's not where we live now. You know, we get upset if we got dirt on the carpet. Get the vacuum. Get over here. Let's get this cleaned up. When they built a, a, a beautiful house, and I mean, it was elaborate. And they based, sometimes they had dirt floors. It's the best they had. So we think, see things in different perspectives. And God th sees things completely contrary to what man sees. And we've got to understand that. He goes on to tell them, he says, it's not even for me to decide that. Or Matthew 20th, chapter 20th, verse. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She asked unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit one on the right hand and the other on the left hand of that kingdom. Well, that's asking a lot. My two boys, I want them at the top. I want them to have the best of the best. One to sit on the right hand and one to sit on the left when he comes into his kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink the cup that I shall drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said unto him, We are able. And he said unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism where I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but ye shall be given but it, but it shall be given to them whom it is prepared for my father. And when the ten heard this, they were moved with indignation against the two brothers. He says, wait a minute. Why are they asking for this? I want to be there. What gives you the right to start asking for being on the top? I want to be on. And that's how we all get in this world. I don't want you to be in top. I want, I want to be in top. I want to be in charge. And they were moved with indignation against the two brothers. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. It shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. When we give of ourselves, that's when we become great. When we sacrifice of ourselves for the benefit of others, that's when we're truly great. We've got to keep ourselves in check. I was listening to a podcast, and they were talking about Winston Churchill. And there was an encounter with one of his servants. And he was extremely rude to one of his servants and was very abrasive in his comment. And the servant came back right at him, just as rude and abrasive with his response. And they said that Winston Churchill says, well, how dare you speak to me that way? And the servant says, well, that's how you spoke to me. And he says, but don't you know how an important man I am? And he said that Winston Churchill realized, he says, how low he had sunk when his importance gave him liberty to be rude and ugly. When we think that we have raised so high above others that we have the ability to be, to be ugly and cruel and vicious to others, we have truly sunk into our lowest depths. When I become so important... In myself. That is when I've reached the lowest of my value. But when I choose to be the servant of others, that's when God raises me to the top. That is my greatest point in pleasing my Heavenly Father, is when I choose to be a servant to others. When I choose to help others. When I choose, even though I'm in a situation where people are not being real pleasant to me, and I choose to be pleasant to them. When people are being hateful, and harsh, and cruel, and I choose to be kind. It's a choice. Walking with God and living for God is a choice. We must choose when we become as a little child. When we become as a little child. When we choose to become as a little child. How many times do you see little kids and, and their, their friends will be ugly and mean and hateful one day, and the next day they go right out to go play with them again? I choose to forget what happened yesterday. They choose to be kind. They choose to be a different person than what happened before. We must choose. 
as Christ is in us, it is time for us to choose servanthood. I choose to be great by being a greater servant. I choose to not let this world conform me to it. Because the world says, oh, no, 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 <laughs> you, you can't do that. You've got to be like this, and you've got to do this, and you've got to, you've got to dress like this, you've got to wear this, you've got to do this, you've got to act like this. Otherwise, you can't be great. You have to go to this school. You have to do this. You have to be a, one of us. You have to be part of this club if you want to be great. And Jesus says you have to throw all that away. Throw away all that foolishness and be as a servant if you really want to be great. In John, the 13th chapter, beginning at the 4th verse, He raises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and gird himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, doth thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said unto him, he that is washed needeth not to save to be washed his feet, but ye are clean ever with, and ye are clean, but not all. You know, Jesus says, you don't understand what I'm doing. You have no comprehension because here you are, you're still functioning in the world. I'm great. I'm important. I'm not touching your feet. Get a servant over here to do that. Why? Why? Because I'm too important. Get a servant over here to do this. We're going to sit at the big table. And have servants come do this. Jesus says, stop this foolishness. Stop thinking that you like the world. Because we're not like the world. We're separated from the world. He got up and poured water in a basin. And he girded himself with a towel. And he knelt down before them. His servants. He knelt before them. And began to wash their feet. And I guarantee it was the same as it was before when he talked about him dying and all that. And they said they didn't understand it, but they were afraid to ask. And the first disciple he went to, I guarantee he was afraid to ask. It wasn't until we got to Peter. Peter was a bit of a loud mouth. That's kind of why I like him. Although a lot of times his foot was in his mouth, but still. He spoke what he meant, what he thought. <laughs> Lord, are you going to wash my feet? You don't understand. You're, I'm your servant. I'll, Give me that basin. I'll wash yours. Not you washing mine. He thought he was being humble. He thought he was being humble. Uh, no, Lord. No, no, no. You can't wash my feet. I'm not worthy. John the Baptist says, I'm not even worthy to loosen up your sandals. Because John the Baptist was thinking like the world thought. He hadn't got it yet. Jesus said, no, 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 no. You're going to baptize me. He said, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Well, who else would baptize Christ? We have to be... Put our obedience before our cares of this world, before our thought process of this world. We have to push our obedience ahead. Christ was obedient to the cross, obedient to the plan of God. They chose this plan. They laid this thing out from the foundation of the earth. They laid it all out. This wasn't a plan that, that came up kind of last minute, kind of willy-nilly. Let's just try and work something out. That's why the prophets spoke of it all the way throughout. That's why the Jews should have known when he showed up. But they didn't understand it. They read it. They memorized it. They could speak it. But they didn't understand it. And too often, we do the same thing. We, we take the word of God and we take the plan of salvation. We take all these things that God has given us. And we change them and we look at them in the way that the world sees things. And we're still wanting to be the greatest. What makes us the greatest? In the world, if I don't have the newest car in the parking lot, I'm not the greatest. If I don't have the most expensive suit on, I'm not the greatest. Jesus said, you want to be the greatest? Come on down here and wash some feet with me. Come on over here and be the servant. The servant of the servants is the greatest in the kingdom of God. Stop thinking this like the world thinks and start understanding how God thinks. Lord, help us to understand. We keep turning it backwards. And Jesus keeps calling us back to be little children. When we become as children, when we become as servants, we start to see our value in the kingdom. We start to see our greatness showing forth. Lord, help us to realize what God has called us to is greatness. But how do we get there? Not like the world does, but by becoming servants, becoming his little children. In Romans, the 12th chapter, verse 1, 
I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt with every man the measure of faith. For as he hath many members in the body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members of members one of another. When we choose to be his children, when we choose to be servants, then God says, now I can use you. Now I can use you. Now I can place you where I need you because you're no longer striving and fighting and bickering to be greatest. You've pushed that aside and you said, I'm choosing to be submissive. I'm choosing to be as a child. I'm choosing to be a servant. And God says, now I can use you. Now you finally got to the place where you can be where I need you. Oh, wow. Wow. And not everybody's going to be an eye. Not everybody's an ear. Not everybody's a hand. You know, where do we, where, where are we? What are we supposed to do? Are we the greatest? What is the greatest? What part of the body is the greatest? How does it function without the rest? You know what? What good are eyes and ears without a heart? What are eyes and ears and a heart without a liver or a kidney? We all function together. This body is one functioning. We rely upon each other. And it's when we all become as children. And we all choose to be servants. And we begin to serve one another. That God can use us and make us great. We're not going to have a parade thrown for us in this world. Because that's not what we're looking for. But the angels in heaven will rejoice when we become a servant. When we stoop down to help the least. That's when the angels in heaven rejoice. They finally get it. They're finally understanding. This is what I've called you to be. The servant of the servants. And you're starting to do what I've called you to do. You've made it to greatness. You've aspired to greatness. And we have great praise in heaven because we've made it. Lord, help us to stop looking at it like the world sees it. Do we want to live? We must die to ourselves. Well, that doesn't make any sense. It does with God. It doesn't in this world because the things of this world, we're not trying to be like this world. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Stop trying to look like the world. Stop trying to act like the world. Oh, I can't believe this. At one time in, in this country, when you got to the point where you could afford servants, you were like, wow, you've arrived. You have made it. A housekeeper, a cook. I mean, you're, wow, you're, you're wealthy. You're rich. But what does that mean? It means you've got more bills than everybody else. Does it make you better than everyone else? It sure doesn't make you better in the kingdom of God unless you treat that servant with honor and dignity and be the servant to the servants because that's what Christ has called us to be. He said, unless you become as a little child, unless you choose and you're never going to arrive, you have to choose. I choose to be the greatest by being a servant. Go out and do the same. Choose to serve. I say, Lord, put me where you would have me serve. Allow me to serve where you would have me to serve. Allow me to be your vessel of honor. Oh, wait a minute. That vessel of honor has got to be something big and fancy. No, that vessel of honor pours out the oil. That vessel of honor pours out the water to wash the feet of the saints. That vessel of honor pours out the healing ointment to help those that are damaged and hurt. That vessel pours out compassion. That vessel pours out joy and love. When we are the servant of the servants, we become greatest in the kingdom. Let us pray.